Hello everybody, OK Fixer here. Um, we're going to start on this here Honda Ruckus and see if we can't make it work. It's a friend of mine and he said uh, uh, we'll see uh, if we can keep it under $100 to fix it. So um, I'm already at $32 right now because I ordered a lock set for it. Uh, let's examine the fossil evidence. Um, this is the lock. Uh, that came off the uh, like the side where the seat is. Uh, I did have to drill that rivet out, uh, so it is original, I thought, but it doesn't have any numbers under it. And this was holding it in place. So if you can see, they turned it into a Russian machine screw. And so I don't know if this has been replaced or not. Probably not, because it did have the original rivet I had to drill out train for you. Uh, and then there was these, uh, these were the ignition and you can see where somebody cut with a hacksaw or something to get them out. But if you notice there are no cut marks on this ignition switch. So how did they make that mark in there? Well simple is, is they drilled it out and uh, they put another ignition switch in it. And the reason why this ignition switch and this lock and this gas cap do not have numbers on them that I can get a key is because they're aftermarket. So what are you going to do? There's not Honda stamped on any of these so it's aftermarket stuff. So I ordered a whole new set, uh, $31. What are you going to do? Got to have, got to have keys, got to have ignition. I also printed off a uh, copy of the wiring harness. If you put eight pair of glasses on, you can just almost read it. Okay, uh, I've got the three tools necessary to work on a Japanese motorcycle, a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and a 10 millimeter socket on a drill. So uh, let's uh, move forward. Uh, probably going to take the battery out and put it on a tender, see if I can't make it come back to life. I'm going to take uh, this off. I don't have keys or ignition or anything like that, so I'm not going to work on that. I've had enough wiring. I'm going to take this off and have a look at the engine, and uh, let's have a look at getting that old gas out of there, uh, pumping some new gas uh, through it into the carburetor, possibly cleaning it out. Uh, the clock reads 1360 on this bike. It looks like it has electric start, too. Did it one time, anyways. Okay. This is a uh, uh, proof that uh, this sort of BS here is is proof that uh, that children should not own motor vehicles. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Put that on charge. Well, it's not fuel injected. There's the carburetor. It's like a, it's liquid cool. It's got a little coolant in it. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Looks like this gas tank will come out. And we can uh, wash it out. Shouldn't be a big deal. There's a filter underneath there, and it looks like a little fuel pump. So, uh, Disconnect our fuel cylinder. Uh oh. Yeah, that gas is kind of stinky. It's not hasn't gotten real bad yet, but it's it's stinky. I'll tell you what I think I'm gonna do. Is, uh, 
there's the wires going to the fuel pump. Probably what I'll do is I'll uh, slosh out that gas and uh, clean it out. And I'll open the bottom of the fuel bowl and I'll put power to that uh, spring come out of something. Well, what? Well, I figured out. Uh, I'll put power to that pump and pump gas uh, through and into the carburetor. Uh, so at least it'll kind of flush out the fuel bowl. Maybe we can get away with uh, not having to clean the carburetor. The gas isn't really stinky yet. Uh, this is a 15. Um, you know, it's got 1,300 miles on it. Probably hasn't had fresh gas in it since 17. A uh, couple years old. Not tremendously bad, but it's getting there. It hasn't turned to, you know, to mush yet. So. We might be able to save that. So let's clean up that tank and we'll run some fresh fuel through it and see what we can. We'll find out where the spring went also. While I was down here I took this giant hoogerific mess off and uh, this they, they were taped together so I'm thinking this might have been his problem where he had this wonderfully soldered together. <laughs> uh, this might be some Californian solder. I don't know. We'll clean those up we'll solder those back together with proper solder and we'll use some heat shrink on them it's the only thing I think that's boogered uh, besides this and uh, I seen a wiring harness online for sale uh, with a jumper in between these so of course these are the ignition wires you know and you turn the ignition switch on it powers everything up so uh, let's get back to the gas tank and the carburetor. I uh, shook out all the bad gas uh, while I was shaking it out. It has a giant in the bottom of it. I don't know if they hit a big whoop de doo or what. Somebody put a pair of pliers on this gas tank also. As you can see that's all bent up. back up to it. I got thinking about something and uh, what I got thinking about was was dinner. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I got thinking about uh, if you turn the ignition on uh, the fuel pump should run because it has to produce fuel pressure for the carburetor. So regardless, you know, I don't have to hot wire the fuel pump. All I got to do is solder these back together, which I will do before I put gas in this, and uh, put some gas on it and crack that float bowl open on the carburetor and put a battery to it, and it should flow fuel out of it. So let's try that. Let's solder these back. Oh, God, more wires. Oh, no. He had uh, two separate wires being soldered, and yeah, there's two wires there, but they're going to the same ground. They're just going to a ground. So, Kind of boogerish, but it looks like it'll work. Now, I know you're not going to believe that, but that's going to be hot. Oh, I get the other side. Look at that. I get the other side. Of
Sometimes you solder something and you flip over on the other side and, and the wire's not tinned up good. I like to tin both sides to make sure everything's okay. Even though it's a terrible solder job, it's all tinned really good and it won't come apart. Again, I know you're not going to believe this. That's going to be hot. So let's clip off our boogers. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I almost grabbed hold of it, didn't I? Train for you. Special, special food. There. That don't uh, look too bad, does it? What do you want for free? Excuse me, excuse me. Bad English. What do you want free? There you go. Alright, uh, let's... I'm going to uh, put a meter on those uh, fuses just to see if they're okay. Uh, and then uh, there's uh, power is right there. That's the positive. And then the negatives right there. We'll get a, a battery and some jumper cables or something and uh, see if we got any power before we put gas in there. You don't know this on the back of each fuse, there's a little spot you can just touch. We're good. We're not. I think that's a spare. It's good. Somebody's replaced this one. Good. Blown. Blown. Well, at least the fuses were doing its job. If it didn't have fuses on it, all the lights on it would be blown, or the devices. Let's change the fuses. You can also look through the center of that fuse and it'll be blown. You can see it. It has two little ends on it. You can stitch, stick your meter on and check, check them. Okay, our fuses are all good. Uh, I'm glad at one time that the daughter had a Day Wu car and it had these in it. Yeah, great. Day Wu. Uh, so uh, let's uh, get a battery and put some power on that and see what happens. Okay, uh, I've got the uh, worst set of jumper cables on here you can imagine, but they're just good enough. Here, our fuel pump. Turn signals work. Okay, let's. Uh, the fuel pump pumped and it pumped up pressure. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back off. I'm going to put some fuel in there and see if I can open up that petcock on the, on the uh, carburetor, uh, on the float bowl, and see if I can pump out all that old crap. Okay, I couldn't find the, uh, the screw for the carburetor, so I took both the screws out. It's really simple. Take this off and 
bent the, uh, uh, the, the rubber uh, air filter gizmo on there and I was able to uh, unscrew the, uh, the uh, uh, float bowl drain for the carburetor and I know it has one because uh, I'm not working on a cats and jammer car. I'm working on a Japanese car. You need three tools to work on this. 10 millimeter a Phillips and a pair of pliers. Uh, how many tools do you need to work on this? The answer is all of them. Okay, uh, back to this. Um, I loosened the screw on that. Let's put some gas in there and, uh, and we'll turn the ignition on and see what happens. And we should get uh, something draining out of the bottom. There you go. Incidentally, I, I checked the oil over here. It was a little bit low, and so I put some in it, and now it's too high because the whole thing only holds half a liter. Or this is uh, non-ethanol that you can still buy here. For not much more than the uh, motor fuel. It's genuine gasoline, unadulterated. It's amazing that the Canadians can have this, but we can't. Why can't you? Why can't you have real fuel? Well, because none of you did nothing about it, that's why. Alright, let's uh, I'm find something to catch that with, probably. Action. Let's disconnect this. Try over again. Try it again. I can hear it pumping. And we have uh, we have lift off here. It stopped. Try it again. Here at pumping, and we have uh, fluid leaking out of the carburetor. Okay, and, uh, dripping on the deal here. Let's try it one more time. Okay, take that off of there. Now, what we'll do. Take you back a little bit, sorry. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now, yeah, let's see here. Okay, before. Get a little, get 
just a little gas now. I wonder if I could go with this. Just a little bit. Wash too much of it down there. Let's give it a little tickle. That funnel had a little oil in it too for me. Put some oil in it, so that ought to be beneficial as well. There you go, and we'll take that daddy oil. Electric power. Alright. Now we have gas. And uh, we have uh, fresh gas in the car. I didn't check the spark, but there's no reason to see why it wouldn't spark. Let's on there and uh, let's hit the spark start button see what happens that's a quiet scooter isn't it <laughs> it runs <laughs> this is how quiet that is Brakes on, sorry. Sorry about that little scooter. A little variable drive there. Well, let me take you off of this. I can. Let's see all the accoutrements here. I got that, and right, and that works, and the lights work, and <laughs> horn, high beam, oh, and low beam, uh, brake, brake. I think we got a blown brake light bulb, probably. Oh no, it works. It works. Listen to that little listen to that little machine pick them off. Listen to that. Listen how quiet that is. Okay, uh, the jumper wires are for the ignition switch, so when I get the ignition switch, yeah, there you go. Uh, it's got a few little caboodles and cabottles that need to be fixed. Uh, the steering, I believe, is bent. The lights are bent. The uh, turn signal is bent. Could use an oil change. I'm going to do some suggestions for Steve, uh, the guy who owns this, uh, get a gas tank. One without a boogered up neck, so his new fuel gauge fix work or fits right. And uh, yeah, there you go. There's your Honda Rucas. There you go. So just a little massaging and she runs. All right. Uh, Steve will be tickled. Thanks for wrenching with me, and uh, have a good one. See ya.